Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack. I'm an analyst working within the civil service. And today I've got a highly requested video for you where I'm going to talk about the working together behavior. All I would ask you to do is remember that these are my experiences and are not to be considered official guidance. Hopefully you all know that by now, but I say that every single time. <laughs> I'm going to use a similar format that I've done in my previous videos where I'm going to ask a strength question, a situational question and a behavior question. You guys seem to really like that and it kind of keeps my videos on the civil service stuff a similar format and I think it makes it a lot easier to follow. Regardless of what role you are applying for, you will have to work with other people. This behavior is all about assessing, can you fit in with the team? What do you bring to the team and what do you do well? There's a quote that I really like and it says that if you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And I think that's extremely true, particularly in the world of work. We rely on others for so many different things things in our roles. We often need people to sign things off or to quality check things and without others we really are a bit helpless. Employers and the civil service are no different want to know that you can collaborate with others whether that's on your immediate team, outside of your organization, externally. They want to know that you can work with other people in order to achieve a common goal. This is also crucial now that we are all in this working from home remote environment because team working is extremely different. If you can can when you're coming up with examples for working together. Think of what you've done to adapt your team working skills or maybe your team environment to suit working from home or working remotely. A lot of people are now on different schedules, different working patterns, working in different places. So team working is a very, very different thing than what it was a year or so ago. Try and think of things that you've done to maybe improve engagement amongst your team or get everyone's voices heard. Anything you can mention about how you've adapted to working from home with your team will be really, really welcome because it's something that we've all struggled with to get used to over the last year. I know that it's also been very difficult to get engagement amongst everyone because I think naturally engagement is just lower in a virtual environment than it is in a face-to-face -face environment. In my opinion, some aspects of team working may include communication and how you adapt your communication style to suit all members of the team. Maybe you talk about team building and what you've done to kind of get everyone to bond and boost morale. It also includes things that none of us really like to do and that is manage conflicts or maybe have those uncomfortable conversations. And I think the final thing I would get you to think about is times where you've encouraged others and more importantly recognize people for their work. Give recognition where recognition is due because it goes a long way with people and people appreciate it. I think for the teamwork in behavior it's extremely important that you think about what you actually bring to the team and the strength question is a great way to start with this. The strength question that I came up with is how do you can contribute to the overall success of the team. As you may know from my previous civil service behavior interviews, and if you haven't watched them, I would encourage you to watch them. I'll put a link up in the card. I like to talk about previous examples in the strength question. I like to give examples of times when I've done the thing that I'm talking about. So I would encourage you for working together strength questions, list some examples of times, maybe in previous roles or in previous jobs, that you've done working together with people and you've worked as a team. If you haven't got as much work experience, you know, throughout university, we're always doing group work, group presentations, group projects. Think about those times and what you brought to the team in those cases. So ask yourself, what do you bring to the team? Maybe you're the person who's extremely organized and you just love scheduling and you get everything in order and you organize everyone that way. Maybe you're the team leader and you lead by example and role model really, really good behaviors and encourage everyone and lift everyone up. Or maybe if you haven't got much work experience, what you bring is this fresh perspective. Maybe you were working on a project with people who are far more experienced and you thought, right, hang on, why do we do something that way? And you questioned it and it forced them to go in a different direction. Having a fresh perspective is invaluable and this is something that you can definitely bring to a team if you don't have as much work experience. So let's talk about for me personally and then hopefully you can come up with some things for yourself. As a leader, I'm always trying to recognize others for the good work that they do and bring people up. I'm always offering encouragement and I like to consider myself very approachable to everyone who I'm working with. Personally, I think the key to team working is trying to get the best out of everyone I can on the team. A lot of the time this comes from knowing individual strengths and then putting these people in the right place for the right piece of work. Technically, as an analyst, I'm also very good and I have a lot of experience in using certain software and using certain tools. This means that as well as being able 
able to lead a team, I love getting involved in the nitty gritty of things. Think about how you best contribute to the team and what you've done in the past. Give a few brief examples of this in your strength questions and I'm sure you're gonna be absolutely fine. Okay, moving on to the situational question, which is more future facing, which is designed to get your opinion on how you would approach something. The situational question that I came up with was as follows. Imagine that you've been asked to lead on a project or a piece of work with a colleague from another team. You can't agree on the approach to take between you. Describe how you would handle this situation. I think this situation has probably happened to a lot of us and it's definitely something that will happen throughout your career. It's inevitable that whenever we're working with other people on a project, not everyone is going to see eye to eye on how to approach things. And this question I think is designed to get a sense of how would you have maybe those uncomfortable conversations when working in a team, particularly as you're the lead on this project, you ultimately have the final say. But I think it's a very good idea to show that you're willing to listen to people and to show that open open-minded approach, that's how we improve and get better. I think in this situation, the best thing would be to have conversations with the person who doesn't agree with your approach. A lot of the times when you have these conversations, we all have the same common goal and it's easy for us to forget that and get wrapped up in the detail of things. You'll know from my previous videos that I am a huge fan and I think you should use data or evidence to back up your decisions. This is also very useful if maybe you have more experience than the person because having that experience is often very very helpful in this situation because you can say that look I've tried this in the past it didn't work and this is why I think we should go in this direction. I'm sure the person that you're speaking to will appreciate that and again try and use evidence or data to highlight your points and the benefits of doing it your way. Hopefully in the end you can come to a kind of win-win situation and I do think it's important to compromise but ultimately, as you're the project lead, you do have the final say, so just bear that in mind in your answer. Throughout these conversations with your team member or maybe a few team members who don't agree with you, it's important to remain positive and avoid getting into heated discussions because that doesn't help anyone at all. Just remember and remind people kindly that you all have the same common goal. We're just deciding how we try and get there. It is important that you do resolve this though because you don't want the team members kind of going off in multiple directions. In order for the success of the team, you need everyone aligned and working to the same direction. Notice how in this situational question, I talked through my approach methodically I didn't give an example of when this has happened in the past, but I did reference experiences that I've had previously that have aided my answer. A lot of the time people go into an example when we're not really interested in an example, we want your approach. Okay, the final question that we're going to talk about is the competency style past example question. So the question I came up with for team working was as follows. Tell me about a time when you were successful in getting people to work together. I think by understanding that people feel happier when they have some responsibility and when they feel trusted and when they're doing work that they enjoy and they're good at, I think this is how you get the best out of people. And I would try and think of a past example where you've done this maybe in the past. I think this question also lends itself to talking about times where maybe the team wasn't quite gelling together and things weren't working. How did you kind of turn that around? What did you do to get people to work together and ultimately get a successful outcome? Everyone loves a story or an example where things didn't start brilliantly, you implemented something and all of a sudden this changed the course of the project and you had a successful outcome. If you can think of an example like that, I think that would be absolutely brilliant. Particularly as well, if you don't have any work experience. I can remember back in university, often projects would start just terribly. Think about those pivot points where maybe you propose an idea or you had a breakthrough or something and this forced everything to click together. I also think a good way to answer this question of getting people to work together successfully are examples where something had to be delivered at pace and very quickly. I can think of countless times where I've had a very, very quick deadline and it was very difficult to get people to work together quickly and more importantly, successfully. Think about times where you've coordinated people to work together or had to link people up and connect people to each other while you work on one thing, they work on another thing, then you all come back together. I was very much playing a coordinator type role in that scenario. So think about when you've had to coordinate people to 
together and ultimately achieved a successful outcome. This could be work related. If you don't have much work experience, it could be non-work related. Just think of some times when you've had to coordinate people. I also really like teamwork and examples where you innovate. So maybe you're working on a project and you bring people together who all have multiple opinions. You probably had to manage some uncomfortable conversations with people disagreeing, etc. This shows a well-rounded approach because not only can you say that you brought people together successfully to innovate, but along the way, you also had to manage opinions and have difficult conversations. So you kind of bring everything together. So those are some ideas that I think you could be thinking of for having success at bringing people together. Finally, the last thing I would say is once you've given your example, nothing ever goes that smoothly. So if you can provide some sort of lessons learned where you say, oh, well, this aspect of the project team working worked well, but that didn't. So in the future, I would do this. I think that'll really give you a well-rounded answer. And I've had feedback from some people saying that I gave them this advice a few videos ago, and this has really helped them get higher scores at interview. Finally, if you did enjoy this video, I would encourage you to go and watch my other civil service videos in this playlist here. I'll see you over there, but thanks very much for watching this one. Have a great day, take care, and I'll see you soon.